welcome back. This is Insight. And my guest today is Dekin Armstrong Oyakilome. I just told you he's a farmer and a big time food processor. Yeah. Uncle Strong, I call him Uncle Strong. <laughs> Great well, to have you on Insight. Thank you very much. Yeah, before we get into the details of food processing, mm. I want to ask a very simple question. What is food? Well, don't be too fast. Don't assume you know it. As simple as that question is, you may just discover you don't know it. So on Insight, what we try to do is whatever issue we are discussing here, we try to dig it out, you know, open it up, spread it out so you can see it, know it, understand it, and act on it if need be. So on Insight, no question is too simple or too basic to ask. So what is food? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, to some people, food is anything that is edible that you can consume to have that satisfaction. Um, sometimes they grew up to uh, be told what to eat, the selected food in the rural environment. Mm. But scientifically, food is any biological material mm. that is edible and that passes through the digestive system mm. and at least we supply one of the six nutrients to the body physiology. Mm. So any biological material that is consumable, that is edible, consumable and can supply at least one of the major nutrients to the body physiology. Such substance or material is termed food. Wow. So you, you studied food science and technology in the mm. university. Yeah. What is food science and what is food technology? Okay. Food science is the study of food, the nature of food the chemical composition of food okay. and also the usefulness of food, the, the, the reaction, the reactivity of food when consumed, okay. the behavior of food, that is food science. Okay. Food technology is the development of technology to handle the food and present it in such a way that is consumable and beneficial to your body physiology. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know there are people called mm. post-harvest technologists. Technology, okay. What do they do differently from food technologists or food yes. processors? Yes. Um, post-harvest technology is the first step in food science and technology. Okay. You know, they, they are majorly concerned with those food harvested. What happens to food when they are harvested? Okay. You see, they, they move in to stop food from getting spoilt and arrest massive wastage. Okay. That is post-harvest technology. For instance, if you harvest cassava mm. and you are not able to sell your cassava tubers, mm. they develop a technology that can arrest spoilage immediately. Because cassava, for instance, uh, starts to deteriorate four hours after harvest. Four hours after yes. harvest, wow. You see, so, so what do you do to that? There are technologies for that. Maybe you, you harvest a lot of oranges mm. and you are not able to take them to the market on time. Mm. And you don't want to avoid, you want to avoid spoilage. There are technologies you will do to arrest, to extend the dormancy period and keep them fresh. Mm. These are post-harvest technology. Okay. If you harvest your maize, and you don't want them to get spoiled, they are still very fresh, mm. you dehydrate them, you pass them through drying and reduce their moisture content. Mm. These are post-harvest technology, something that can extend the shelf life of food. Okay. Proud to further processing. Okay. Yes. So this food processing we're talking about, yes. can you explain the process? What is, mm. the, what is this process? Yes. Well, there are many processes. Mm. If you handle a particular food item, Okay. Yes. Then I'll be able to explain to you. Um, okay. Let's talk about yes. this cassava you just mentioned. Yes. Okay. For instance, um, if you harvest cassava and you are not able to deal with the harvested tubers, mm. what you do is to wash the tubers very well, wash them with clean water, and wrap them up with transparent polythene bags okay. and tie them up and put on some holes around it and keep them under shade. Mm. Deterioration will stop. 
you can keep that cassava tuber fresh for about 25 to 30 days. Wow. If you have oranges, for instance, mm. and you want to keep them for some time before marketing, mm. you get them, you harvest them, you clean them, and rub them with petroleum jelly. Wow, I was just coming to, uh, to yes. that because when you pass by some villages yes. you know, and some yes. towns, you see heaps of heaps. oranges, yes. you know, getting rotten, getting yes. spoiled. You see, you know, plantain, banana, you know, pineapples. Yes. I was just trying to ask if there's no, you know, local technology yes. for preserving. Very simple technology. You know, and protecting them yes. from when you, you Well, you start from harvest. Mm. You saw the, the, the spoilage starts from harvest. When you want to harvest orange, mm. you, don't, you don't drag them down. You don't... You, you, you take a bag, mm. you climb up and put them gently. Or you set a tent around the tree mm. so that they can fall on it. Okay. All right? They mm. should not be bruised at all. Mm. When you get that, you wash them, clean them, and rub them with petroleum jelly. Okay. If you don't have petroleum, we have also used native oil. Like these Oreo oil, they call Oreo oil. Okay, shea butter uh, oil. You know, shea butter oil. Mm. And you rub them. We have successfully done that. Oh. Then you will keep the orange fresh for more than three weeks. Wow. No ripening, no degreening. It remains so fresh. You can also stop planting from ripening mm. by wrapping them in a transparent polythene box. Wow. Yes. That's actually a problem. You yes. know, sometimes you buy uh, a bunch of plantains. Yes. You're not ready to eat it yet. Exactly. Before you know it, every plantain is yes. ripe all at you, the same time. Exactly. You know, and you're just wondering yes. what is this. Yes. You, these are very simple technology for keeping them. So explain that again. Mm. Listen, so you can know how to preserve your plantain when you yes. buy bunches of plantain yes. or a bunch. Yes. If you, you know. have a bunch or two and you don't want them to ripe at the same time, mm. just take the fingers of the plantain or banana, mm. keep them in the transparent poly bags. Tie them up mm. and just use your nail or biro, puncture mm. about two or three uh, holes, holes mm. and keep them in a very cool place. Wow. Ripening will discontinue. Hmm. Yes, for about three weeks. Wow. Yes. <laughs> there are different ways people store their foods. Yes. You know, could be freeze, canned, you know, uh, dried. Mm. What is the effect of storage on nutritional food values? Yes. Um, that is where food science comes in. Okay. You must understand the nature of food. For instance, some people put banana into the fridge. Yes. And before you know it, it suffers from freeze bone. Okay. You see? It becomes black and soft. Yes, yes, black. And uh, it suffers what we call autolysis, self destruction. <laughs> and, <laughs> and within a short time, you, you can't consume it. There are certain temperatures mm. conducive for various uh, foods. foods yeah. But what is important mm. is knowing the behavior of the food you are keeping. Let's start from this. Fruits, for example, mm. they are classified into climateris and non climateris okay. For instance, if you have a banana mm. and it's green, mm. as is the the greening, as it's ripening, the sugar level increases. Okay. All right? Those are climateric foods. Okay. Like plantain. Hmm? As it's getting ripe, ripe yes. the sugar level, level will be increasing. Will be increasing. Okay. All right? Then you have non climateric foods, mm. like orange, like pineapple. Mm. If you don't an, allow the orange to get matured and ripe, and if you pick it, the sugar level remains the same, even when the orange is the greening. Okay. So... When it is ripening, the sugar level will not increase. It remains so. So you see some beautiful oranges where ripe, but when you try to take them, it's so sour, no sweetness, mm. because they were not matured originally okay. before you, you harvested them. So you must understand the nature of food. Mm. There are foods that must be kept below 15 degrees centigrade. They are not meant for fridge. Like? Like your vegetables. Mm. like your tomatoes, okay. like your garden eggs. These are not things you keep in, into the freezer. So when we have those ones in the house, how, how do we preserve them? You just keep them in a cool place. 
Okay. But now we we you know the technology is is, is advancing, mm. and we now have fridges with uh, various regime of temperatures. Mm. If you are able to have that, it's okay. Okay. You just keep some food naturally, and take them as it is. But the ultimate mm. is processing, okay. because you don't have the facility to extend the shelf life. Mm. So that is where processing must come in. Mm. 